everyone this is what we're tying today this is the fuzzy wuzzy hopper definitely has a few more steps than the classic chubby chernobyl but it's a really a great effective pattern it's not too tough if you have a little bit of experience tying a parachute and a little bit of deer hair you will be fine all right let's get rocking this is a 52 63 and a size 4 sometimes we'll even tie these up to a size 2 it's a big fly but it brings up big fish this is Vivas 140 in black. It feels kind of silly uh, using 140 on a dry fly, but a fly this big with this much foam and all these other materials, it just makes sense. I know this is a streamer, nymph hook. Uh, again, there's plenty of foam to support this big hook, and you're gonna want it when you hook into a bigger fish. First thing, we're tying our foam in right away. I'm using two colors, I'm using black and tan. Um, that's kind of the classic colors for this. You can play around. These have been cut already with the River Road Creations beaver tail cutters. You can do that. You can skip them. Uh, it just saves me a lot of trimming time at the end and it looks pretty nice. I'm using two different sizes, a size 2 and a size 4 cut. And it just makes a perfect overlap at the back. But you need to make sure this head section lines up. So I've wrapped my thread right back to the barb. I'm gonna set these up here, making sure I have some overlap from the head. This is usually one of the toughest parts. So loose wrap, loose wrap, and now add some tension. And then go straight down to the shank and that's gonna lock the wraps in. This top piece is just kinda gonna be an overbody the under is going to create all of our segments. So I just wrapped, what, just two or three times underneath, and I'm already going to create a segment. Three wraps, and then I'm actually going to bring this black piece of foam down. Big thing when you're using the black foam on the top, make sure you stretch it before you really crank it down. Otherwise, this head up top, this very last piece, won't line up. Great. Okay. Now we're going to tie in our underwing. We're using Crystal Flash here, as always. Uh, two or three strands is great for this. Don't need a whole lot more. I'm going to trim these in half. And we're just going to lash these down. Put two wraps, two wraps, try and fan it out a little bit. Don't worry about cutting it down just yet. Again, if your foam starts to slide, just go down and put two or three wraps on the shank. That'll lock it into place. Next thing, we need some deer hair. This is a Primo strip from Wapsie. It's a great all around chunk of deer hair. It's not the finest you're gonna find, but it works great. So let's grab a comb, move all that under fur, and we're gonna use the stacker. Tips down. Okay, everything looks pretty lined up. We need to measure this before we tie it in. I want it to measure out to, the tip should just extend beyond the back of the foam there. Once you have that measurement, we're gonna trim all this. Loose wrap, loose wrap, and then you can cinch. I don't want a ton of deer hair out front it's a lot of work to trim it and it's just messy and this is easy just creating a simple wing you can now cut this unruly crystal flash use your rotary function make sure everything's looking good I always add a few more wraps to the shank afterwards after I put the deer hair in now it's time for legs using barred sexy floss 
from Montana Fly. This is the amber color. Red works well. So I'm going to take one leg, trim it in half. one leg cut in half and then those subsequently used in half again is the perfect size for this big fly no trimming necessary all right last thing we need is a little bright piece of foam or you can use yarn it's just going to help make this fly more visible it's also going to hold this wing down a little bit Two wraps on that, right back to the shank. We'll trim this off. Looks good. All right, now we're just going to be adding segments with the tan moving up the shank. Once you reach about mid shank, I do add a wrap to the top as well. Check the underside, make sure that looks good. Helps to really lay a good thread base down beforehand too. Part of the reason I'm using such a long nozzle on this bobbin is I can reach the back, I can put in a lot of thread wraps real easily. to the last segment here. Just right where I want to be. Okay, again, stretch that top piece of foam. Again, the shank. good this is where things get real interesting because how often do you add a parachute post to a grasshopper not often we're going to use some ep fiber i really like how long and straight and manageable these fibers are i'm going to add two wraps on top one in front one in back and then i'm going to show you a little trick zap a gap you may have heard of super glue Super helpful. Just need a small little dab in there, which is what I got. Now let's start posting. The super glue really helps you kind of stiffen up the post, which is really tough. You have this valley. That you're trying to get thread wraps into and that's that's the biggest challenge there that's too tall this is a fairly compact little parachute even though we're using pretty big hackle and it's a big fly i'm going to trim this actually it's getting in the way There we go. Don't be afraid to add some tension. And really choke up. So cinch that bobbin all the way down. That's really gonna help. Get down to the body, add some wraps. Okay, we'll tighten that up here in a minute. Get that out of the way. Hackle. It's gonna to be tough to find bigger hackle for this in your normal dry fly necks. Um, if you have a, a neck, neck will be perfect. Saddle, you might have to really dig. These are actually from a woolly bugger pack. And it's the perfect thing for hex, big hoppers, stuff like that. Just 
fibers aren't as rigid as really good dry fly hackle. Really, we're just trying to create some legs and extra movement to the fly. I don't think this thing needs a whole lot of help from hackle to float. All right, I'm tying that in on my side. And I've gone ahead and trimmed some of the hackle next to the stem. That's gonna give you a lot more purchase when you're tying this thing in. Tidy that up a bit. Work it back down. All right, I'm gonna trim the stem off from my side. Don't forget to tie your legs in. Sometimes it gets so focused on the parachute post. Forget the legs, and the legs probably more important. back to the shank here tighten everything up here's a really important part I'm actually going to tilt this so you can see what's happening I want to bring my thread up around the post and then rested on my side and it's going to sit right there that's going to help us tie this off otherwise it's going to get a little messy as if it wasn't already all right here we're just going to take some simple Echo wraps right on down the post. Try not to start these too high. We don't need a tall post here. And it's a little goofy with the legs, but it's worth it. Fly catches fish. Simple as that. Okay, got a few wraps there. Now, I'm actually going to work my thread around the post and what I'm doing is pinching that hackle between wraps above and below the hackle and then once I got two or three wraps I'm not trapping in too many I can go right down to the body and right down to the shank and I can tie that off whip finish I'm only gonna whip finish once here because we're gonna add a layer of glue to the bottom. Trim the stem. Looks pretty good, clean it up. If it's a little bit messy, don't stress, just remember it's a grasshopper. Okay, I'm gonna trim the post now pretty manageable and then I'm actually going to come in with some head cement right where I tied off that hackle and just put a teeny tiny little dab just to secure things nothing worse than handing someone a fly and then it falls apart after a few casts so that's the fuzzy wuzzy again this is a pretty big size but it's it doesn't matter sometimes those fish get greedy now we're just going to coat this underbody I'm gonna use some Sally Hansen's because I like the way it smells. No, not really, because it coats everything really well. Makes your fly more durable. Make sure it soaks in there. Get all the thread wraps. Get your whip finishes. All right set her on your drying rack get her ready to fish let us know what you think uh, if you get a chance to tie this and fish it we'd love to hear from you if you just watching for fun let us know what you think if you are watching on YouTube think about subscribing and staying up to date with what we got going on at the Northern Angler we hope to see you all very soon on the water or in the shop uh -huh.